Hi everyone, a blessed Sabbath to everyone who, who are listening. My name is Chrisanne and I'm a part of Rescue the Perishing TT Ministry. Thank you, Brother Vernon, for allowing me to be here presenting today. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and also your ministry, that we will work together in the vineyard of the Lord to hasten his coming and to draw as many souls as possible to Jesus Christ. Today we are looking at a very solemn topic that I think it is very needful that we all take into consideration today. And that topic is none other than death. So right before we get into our little discussion, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love, mercy, and grace over our lives. Every opportunity, Father Lord, we can say thank you. I pray, God, that we will grab that opportunity. We lift and exalt your holy name today, and I pray that even as I speak, let not the words that I speak be mine, but let it be straight from your throne, that it will touch the hearts of someone who are listening. Continue to be with this ministry, Lord Jesus. I pray that you may continue to bless Brother Vernon with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge from on high that we will do what you are calling us to do and that we will labor faithfully till you shall come and take us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today our scripture, scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. That's Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27. And the word of the Lord says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You know, friends, recently I passed by a, a cemetery. And I looked at a plaque that was at the top of the grave bed that read, or that read rather, in memory of. And I, I thought about it in memory of and the person name. And I thought about it and say, if we were to die at this very moment, would we leave a good memory behind? Is the life that we are living will prove that it would be written upon our gravestone if we should die? Would it be rightfully read in memory of? Brethren, we are living in a time that we really need to consider Hebrews 9.27 because it is saying to us it is appointed unto men, human beings, once to die. But it is not really the dying that it is the big issue. But it's what comes after. After death will come the judgment. I remember losing my father at the age of 14. It was like hearing he was sick with cancer. And then hearing he died. And then hearing he was about to be buried. Brethren... Death could come so rapid and so quick that some of us may not have a chance to reflect on our lives and to set our life in order. So because we know that death could come at any time, what are we ought to be doing presently? What are we ought to be doing now? 
I want to believe that what we ought to be doing now is reflected in 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saint the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. We ought to be setting our house in order, brethren. And this has dual application. Our house, meaning our family, and also we are to be setting our hearts in order to receive or to meet Christ. I believe that we are living in a time, brethren, that it is no time to be playing with our soul salvation. We do not know what time, the day, the hour, the minute we can die. And because we do not know, it is not revealed unto us. We ought to be setting our lives in order. There are many things in our character that ought not to be there. And God in his love and his mercy will make that known unto us. And as fast as it is made known unto us, we ought to be setting it in order and getting rid of it in our character. So God sent his prophet to tell Hezekiah that you are about to die. I remember reading in the spirit of prophecy. And she was actually speaking to her brother. And the conversation went something like this. And she was asking, if you would know if Christ would have come, in two years or three years, would you live differently? And the brother said, yes. He may do things differently if he know Christ would have come like in 12 months or in six months. And we are placed in a situation such as this. We think that we have time. So because we think that we have time, we are living differently to how God wants us to live. But brethren, time is upon us. And we do not know when we are about to die. And because this is hidden from us, brethren, we ought to live differently every day. We ought to be surrendering our heart to Christ. We ought to be searching our lives to make sure that it is resembling Jesus. We are to be asking the Lord to give us strength, to give us endurance, to renew the right spirit within us. Brethren, time is upon us. And God is calling us to live a life that Christ lived while walking the dusty streets of all. A quotation reads, Sometimes you will never know the true value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Brethren, salvation is presented to us today. We must understand the depth of salvation, the price that Jesus Christ has paid for us. When we begin to understand that, we will not linger in our sin. We will not procrastinate in our actions. But we will hasten to surrender our lives to Jesus. Let us not wait till something drastic happens. To run to the feet of the cross. But because we know God Jesus loves us so much. 
Let us go to him freely. Let us love him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Let us be obedient to Christ. Let us take a little time to consider the book of Luke chapter 16. And we are considering the rich man and Lazarus for a little while. Now there is a lesson to be learned within this parable. There is a serious spiritual lesson, brethren, to be learned in this parable. Now I'm reading from verse 19. And it reads, There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and feared sumptuously every day. So there was a man who the Bible described to be a rich man. He's living of his mean, wearing the finest clothes, eating the best food, having servants to do this and servants to do that. Money is coming in so quickly that he's even unable to spend it. But although all this thing was a reality for him, he did not consider God. It goes on to say, however, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the, the angel into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. We see here. A rich man having everything he, he want. But yet still he died and leave everything behind. And there was Lazarus, a poor man. Who depend upon God daily for his bread. He too also died. But if you continue to read we will recognize that the poor man was saved and the rich man was lost. Consider it, brethren. Is what we have able to sustain us even after we are, we are dead? Is rejecting God now, is suffice enough even when we are dead whatsoever we possess brethren whatsoever we have it makes no sense having if we do not have jesus because when the time of death comes it will be none and void because all our possessions, all our riches, everything that we have cannot save us when we die. Will in memory of be associated to you if you should die? Or would you be forgotten because we did not live a life pleasing to God? So although Lazarus was poor, had nothing, his heart was right with God. And although the rich man had everything, he did not know his appointed time of death and was not prepared to live the life that God has called us to live. 
And when he died, he died in his sin and he was lost. I heard my friend told me that someone told her that next year they will give their heart to Jesus. They will change their life. And my response to that was, is he certain that he will live to see next year? Because that's a very brave and wide claim to make. We do not know how long we have to live. So with every breath that we take, brethren, we need to take it with the assurance to know that it is the grace of God that have us alive. And because it is the grace of God that have us alive, we will live to please him. Every minute, every hour, every second of our lives. But let us take in consideration something that happened. Because within the 16th chapter of Luke, within that story, the rich man and Lazarus, we see there that the rich man went to hell and Lazarus went to heaven in the bosom of Abraham. And then after being tormented, he couldn't even cool his tongue. He said something very, very important. He said in verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. He said in his lifetime, the rich man received good things. Because the rich man exchanged salvation for what, that which is temporary. And now because he exchanged his salvation for thing that perishes, he too perished when that time came. And then that rich man said something very, very important. 27, it says, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. Brethren, God has something prepared for us. But if we exchange that with what this world gives us, we will receive damnation. Now, after exchanging his salvation to the things of this world, he wanted to warn his brethren because they themselves was going down the same path that he took. And he understood the end of it. So he wanted to warn them so that they would not go there. But then Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophet. We have the scripture, brethren, that when we read it, we will see the life that we have to live. They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophet, Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Brethren, we have the Bible. And we have a more sure word of prophecy. But not only that. We have one who have been risen from the dead. Jesus. We can look at his life. 
and surrender before it's eternally too late. We can look at the life of Jesus. And through his life, we can see the plan of salvation. Brethren, if we look at Jesus and we are not persuaded, nothing else will persuade us. Time is running out on us. Time is running out. We see how COVID have this world, but yet still COVID is just the smoke before the fire. COVID is the calm before the storm. What are we waiting on to give our lives to Jesus? Are we waiting for something more drastic to take place? Are we waiting for our body to be inflicted with disease to, to surrender? Are we waiting for us to be lying down on our bed and facing upward to give our lives to Jesus? Let everything that have breath praise the Lord, brethren. We have the breath of life in our nostrils. It is high time to come to Christ. It is behind time to come to Christ, but yet still, probation is open. The ark door is open for us. All we need to do is to walk inside the ark, and that ark represents Jesus Christ. And we will be saved from the flood. Let us not be catch unaware and be as one as, as the prophet, prophets say, as Noah's carpenter. Who just worked on the ark, but had no desire to go inside the ark. God is calling you today. God wants to save you today. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing. What religion you are from. It doesn't matter your ethnic. It doesn't matter your religious affiliation. It doesn't matter your financial situation. God is calling you. And he's calling you because he wants to save you. He's calling you because he wants to use you. To bring someone else to him. Brethren, time is running out. If we are looking to Jesus and that do not persuade us to surrender our lives to him, nothing else will. Nothing else will, brethren. The serious part about this whole situation is some wait till we are on our dying bed to surrender. But what if you don't have the opportunity to be on your dying bed? What if you die instantly? What opportunity are you waiting on? Recently, I have been experiencing a headache. And I really totally believed that I was going to die. And every night before I slept, I said, okay, well, this might be my final night because this headache was just there at my frontal lobe, just pulling and pulling. And, I, and, and it, it seemed so constant that it was not going. It lasted, I think, a whole week or two weeks. And every night I said, okay, this might be my last night. I may never wake up. Are, we, are you waiting on something to be pulling in your head? A vein to burst? To be shot? To get into an accident? To contract COVID and die? Are we waiting on that? To surrender our hearts to Christ? Brethren, let us not think 
as that man who built the Titanic, who said, this ship will never sink. Let us stop thinking that we are too young to die. This ship will never sink. Brethren, God's hand of mercy is outstretched towards us. Let us not allow that hand to be removed. But let us surrender our lives to Jesus. Let us give him all of our strength, all of our lives, our heart. Let us work for him. God wants to save us. Friends, listen to this parable. Luke chapter 12 from verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, or pr plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will i do i will pull down my bands and build greater and there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods and i will say to my soul soul thou has much goods lay up for many years take than ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? This rich man is saying, I will do this and I will do that. I will build greater. I will plant more. I will gain more. And on top of that, the rich man had the audacity to talk to his soul and say, soul, thou has much goods. You are so secure for many years down the road. I am sure to see next year. I am sure to reach my pension. I am sure to see my children finish school, marry, and have their own family. So I'm saying I have enough for many years down the road. And because I am so secure with my financial status and with my best car and my big house, I will eat, drink, and be merry. And on top of that, be at ease. Brethren, at no time we ought to be in this mindset. How could we be preparing or planning for when we finish school and when we finish study and when we do this and do that and we are not considering our own soul. How could we be paying or saving or doing all sorts of things 10 years down the road, hoping to see that 10 year come to pass, but yet still our soul salvation with nothing to us. We are at ease, we are eating, and we are drinking, and we are being merry. But yet still, we are not thinking. What if God said unto us, So you are preparing for five years down the road? Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Now, all that we are preparing for, who 
will inherit it. All that we are providing for, who will inherit it? But God is calling us and he is telling us in verse 21. So it is he that laid up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. But rather God is calling us to lay up treasures in heaven. God is telling us to seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us. God is saying, seek me first. So if we should die, we will be sleeping, awaiting the first resurrection. But if not, and we are seeking self first, sad be our portion, and the second resurrection, we will hear our name. Time is upon us. We need to be making some decisions in our lives. We need to be putting away sin in our hearts. We need to be raising to a different level in our, spirit, in our spirituality. We need to be asking the Lord Jesus if there is whatsoever sin in our lives. Please give us the strength. To get rid of it. We need to adopt that anti-typical day of atonement mentality. Where we can be seeing and searching our hearts. And putting away our sinful Adamic character. And being transformed into the character of Christ. We need to be setting our house in order because we do not know when that spirit of death will visit us. Friends, let us take this as an encouragement today. Let us work while it's day for the night coming when no man can work. Let us surrender our lives to him. If we are backslider, let us ask the Lord to revive that love within us for him. If we do not have the energy or the, the zeal, let us pray and ask God to give us that zeal. Because God loves us so much, he wants to save us. He wants to save us. He wants us to be able to stand in this time for truly we are born for such a time as this we do not know when we should die so from today let us ask the lord to come into our hearts and help us to be transformed just like his son So I encourage you, friends, hold on to Jesus. Step up on that ramp and get into the ark quickly before that door of mercy is shut. May God continue to help us as we seek his face, as we allow his spirit to lead us and open our minds to more spiritual truth found within his word as we prepare our lives to meet him soon father continue to be with us continue to let your 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 light to shine upon us and continue to help us to be more like you in jesus name amen god bless you all and have a wonderful day as we continue pressing on, God bless you.